There we go. The pulley just came right off. Okay, there we go. We should be free which we are. Hey guys, today on One Road, I'll be changing the power steering pump in this 2003 Chevrolet Suburban from the original factory worn out unit to this nice new fresh unit. Let's get into it. Okay, first order of business is gaining access to the power steering pump and pulley, which is way down there. In order to get way down there, I have to remove a couple of things from the top here. First thing will be this engine cover, then this intake ductwork, and then I'll be removing this upper radiator fan shroud. This engine cover just has a single eight millimeter bolt right here at the top. And with that bolt loose, you can simply lift up and pull it out. With that engine cover now removed, I have access to this hose clamp. And with this hose clamp loose and another one over here by the mass airflow sensor, I can slowly and carefully remove this intake ductwork. And I'm gonna use this flathead screwdriver to break the seal here on this side of the ductwork. So that way I can get this off a little easier. There we go. I can now remove this upper radiator fan shroud. Looks like I'll have two bolts right up top here, as well as a couple plastic clips down below. Now with the upper radiator fan shroud gone, we have so much more room. The next thing to do is remove this fan. And to do that, there is a large nut on the back side here that I'll have to remove. To loosen that nut, I'm simply gonna use this large adjustable wrench. I'll go ahead and slide it down behind the fan, right onto the nut. Now I'll take this rubber mallet and hit the adjustable wrench. And the trick here is to hit it hard enough and fast enough to actually loosen that nut and not spin the pulley. And I think I just did it. Yes, all right. And with that fan removed, you can see just how much room we are starting to have here. And the next step is to remove this serpentine belt. And to remove the serpentine belt, I'm gonna use a 15 millimeter ratchet, put it right there on the tensioner, pull down, and just pull the belt right off its track. I went ahead and also removed the lower radiator fan shroud just to get more room. And now I have tons of access to this pulley. And I went down to my local auto parts store and rented this tool kit to remove the power steering pulley. Okay, now that everything is well lubricated, I can go ahead and put together this tool, which is essentially selecting the right side to go on the actual pulley, then sliding the nut into that little sleeve and matching up the other side. Okay, then there's another ring that goes around all of that. It should look something like that. I have a 5 8 inch socket on here and a 21 millimeter wrench. And we're gonna start to work this a little bit. All right, and the more I tighten this bolt up against this pulley, the nut here is actually gonna be reversing on these threads, pulling that pulley off of the shaft from the power steering pump. There we go. Wow. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. The pulley just came right off. This tool is amazing. Taking a little closer look here, you can see the inside of the pulley there. And here's our tool we used. Of course it all fell. This is the bolt and there is the pulley. And because I used the right tool for the job, it came off without any issues at all. The reason I had to remove that power steering pulley first is because there's three bolts here that were located directly behind it. There's no way to access these bolts unless you remove that pulley. These three bolts attach this power steering pump to this bracket. All right, the next step is going to be to remove two panels. We have one here and one back here, which looks like it's made out of aluminum. This front one is plastic. We just have to remove these so I have access to the back of that power steering pump. I'll go ahead and use my 15 millimeter socket here. Ugh. 
Okay, down here you can see my 3 8 ratchet. I've got a 3 inch extension and a 6 inch extension. And attached to the other side of that is my 15 millimeter socket, which is sitting on this bolt right there. And from under the vehicle, it's a little hard to tell what's going on here, but you can see that socket is attached to that bolt, which is attached to this bracket, which attaches the back of the power steering pump to the engine. So this bracket attaches the rear of the power steering pump to the engine. There's really no way of getting at that bolt from down below, so I'm gonna do it from above. And with this rear bolt now removed, I can work on the front three. These ones right here. All right, and those aren't very tight at all. All right. And the last one here. This power steering pump should be loose now. And yes, it is. And if we look towards the bottom of this pump, there's just one more bolt that I have to worry about. This bolt right here, this is attached to the front of this power steering pump, and it's simply a bracket to hold some wires. I've already loosened it, so I'll go ahead and pull it out the rest of the way. Well, hey guys, right now you're watching me install a power steering pump in this 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. And if you're enjoying it, why not hit that thumbs up? It really helps the video and the channel. Okay, so there's no way to get this power steering pump out of here without loosening up this bracketry so you can move this bracketry out of the way and then hopefully be able to remove this power steering pump. I do still have the two hydraulic lines attached and that's because I'm hoping that once I get this pump out, maybe I'd have access right about here to the back of that pump and be able to cleanly remove all that fluid. Okay, I've got this bracket pretty loose. Okay, I've actually had to take and remove all the bolts here. So there's four bolts for this bracket that I completely removed here. They're all, I think they are. So all the bolts, all four bolts are removed. Now I can slide this bracket, you know, up and out of the way so I can get at this power steering pump. I don't know, am I dreaming here? Or is this gonna work out the way I'm hoping? I might be dreaming. Okay, I actually was able to wrestle this thing out, and I'm now hoping that I can remove these two lines and strategically place that dripping fluid into my drain bucket below without getting it all over everything. This is the high pressure line, and this is the low pressure line. Okay, there we go. And I did grab something to try to shove in there. I've got a cap to like a gear oil bottle. I'm just gonna shove that in there just to keep, you know, fluids from leaking out all over the place. And now I can set that aside. And with this high pressure line, you can take your line wrench. I've already loosened it, by the way. That's why it was that loose, but you just loosen this thing up. All right, we should be free, which we are. And you can see with that method, there was very minimal cleanup. A little bit spilled on that cross member there, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. All right, and the only other thing I'm gonna make sure that I do is to change that O-ring there on this high pressure line. The new power steering pump came with an O-ring to do that. So I will make sure to do that. Okay, the deconstruction is now over. We've taken everything apart, everything out that needed to be taken out. At this point, the only thing left to do is to start putting everything back together. And as you guessed it, it's exactly the same way as it came apart. Is that even lined up? I don't think so. Oh gosh, there we go, get a thread. I think they did, no. Nope. Uh, 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 oh. Here's why you never mess with your factory power steering pump. Well, all right, we have everything in place. This bracket here is nice and tight, as well as the power steering pump. Three bolts, nice and tight. The next step is to get that power steering pump pulley back onto the shaft. Here's my original factory pulley, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse this because it's in perfect condition, even though I did buy a replacement just in case. These pulleys are a pressed fit, so it's not gonna be as easy as just pushing this thing on. Thankfully, this rental toolkit that I used to take the pulley off should help me to get that pulley back on. I now have the original pulley and the installer tool set up. So the pulley is just basically barely sitting on the shaft. 
there and the installer tool consists of this bolt that's threaded all the way inside of the actual power steering pump shaft there's threads in there and then we have this this kind of like nut thing right here that I'm then going to use to press on this pulley onto the shaft. Okay, essentially I'm just going to back it up with this wrench here and then I'm just going to tighten this nut and this should simply push the pulley straight onto the shaft. Looks like it's working too. It looks like the nut has bottomed out. So essentially when this nut bottoms out, it is because everything is good to go. You can see the pulley is perfectly flush with the shaft of the power steering pump there. The face of this nut here that's pushing the pulley on is completely flat all the way through. It is going to stop itself when this is perfectly seated. Now all I have to do is back this bolt out and we are good to go with pressing that pulley back on. The serpentine belt is now on as well as the fan. And I think at this point, I'm ready to fill it with brand new power steering fluid and start it up. Well, all right, I just took this thing out on a test drive, did a lot of turning to make sure that everything was good to go. The steering is buttery smooth, it's quiet, it's everything I expected. So I think we're good to go. Well, what'd you think? I just changed the power steering pump in this 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. It's the first time I've ever changed a power steering pump, and it was interesting. I did a little research beforehand just to know what I was getting into, and then I just went for it. And I gotta tell you, for as easy as it was, it was also equally as hard. You know, essentially all I'm doing is removing a couple of bolts to get that power steering pump out of there. But the problem is everything is so tight in there. And yeah, that sounds weird coming from a 2003 Suburban, but not only is it tight, but the power steering pump was attached to a bracket. I had to unbolt that bracket and the bracket was huge and heavy. And once I got all that stuff out of there, that was the easy part. The hard part was putting it all back together again. Trying to get that power steering pump back up in there, trying to get that bracket lined up, trying to get that wiring lined up again. You know, it's not rocket science, but it was just difficult. You definitely saw me struggle in there. <sighs> and I even broke the electrical connector coming out of the coolant temperature sensor that's screwed into the head. So that was part of the frustration for me. I had to go down to the parts store, pick up a replacement unit, luckily they had one, and then cut the old one off, solder the new one on, and make sure that it was as good as a factory connection as I could get it. Put all that stuff back together. And finally, finally, I was able to start the truck up and test it out. And to be completely honest with you, there was definitely a couple of corners I cut here. I didn't put the truck up on jack stands like I probably should have. That way I could have rotated the steering wheel to get any air bubbles out of the system before I started it up. Actually, after I started the truck, I had no power steering. Even though the truck was running, there was no power steering whatsoever. I tried cranking that steering wheel and I could not turn it. It was only when I revved it up a little that I felt that power steering pump kick in and everything was seemingly working properly. Now, I don't know if that's normal. I don't know if that was just simply an air bubble in the system, and as soon as I revved it, it was able to suck that air bubble out or what have you. But from what I can tell, everything is working smoothly and perfectly. Sitting here in the shop at idle, I'm able to turn the wheel left and right all the way lock to lock with zero issues whatsoever. It feels nice and smooth. Now, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching this far and you haven't hit that thumbs up yet, go ahead and do so now. It helps the video and the channel. And if you're watching this far and you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I'm Jimmy for One Road, and I will see you in the next one.